Hi everybody, Rob Keese here with another edition of <laughs> What's in the Box. Today is December 8th, 2015, which means it's 10 days away from Star Wars The Force Awakens opening in theaters. Uh, but no, it's also the day that Ant-Man, uh, Marvel's Ant-Man, finally comes out in home video, as well as, since Ant-Man is of course the end of Phase 2 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's the same day the whole Phase 2 uh, home video collection, this bad boy, uh, hits the street as well. Um, if you didn't follow along with the previous home video releases, I've been kind of going along collecting all of the superhero films from every studio, really. But um, the one thing I did not get is the Phase 1 collection. So after the Avengers came out, they released the first six movies of the franchise, uh, beginning with Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk, and of course, um, Iron Man 2, Thor, Cap, uh, the first Avenger, and the first Avengers. Um, that all came together in a collection that was based around the briefcase that had the Tesseract in it. Uh, there was actually a lawsuit for the suitcase design from the German company that made that for the film. But anyways, uh, it was kind of a cool collection, and it included these disc sleeves with this beautiful art by Matt Ferguson. Uh, Mr. Ferguson returns to do the art for this one. Uh, I wrote up an article about that on ScreenMate.com, but uh, we should be able to see that inside this package. So I think I've... Uh, I haven't opened it yet, but I did start taking out the tape. I think I got it all. I'm not exactly sure how to open it, but right off the bat, you can see uh, through the window viewer there, uh, that is the orb from Guardians of the Galaxy, and within it is the Power Stone, one of the six Infinity Stones. Uh, that's going to be coming into play in Phase 3, which begins next year with Captain America Civil War. And there's a base down there, and inside the base, uh, I think, are some um, collectibles, along with, of course, the disc sleeves for the six movies. And on the side, you can see the six movies that comprise Phase 2, beginning with Iron Man 3 and, and concluding with Ant-Man. I'll talk about Ant-Man a little more later, but first I want to talk about this bad boy. All right, uh, by the way, this thing is available uh, in Canada and the United States exclusively to Amazon. So if you want to buy it in times for the holidays, uh, you got to go to the Amazon website to get it. You can't get it in, in stores, as far as I know. All right, so it uh, looks like there's a thing back here, tab. I can open it up. Uh, the collection includes, like I said, disc sleeves with the discs for each movie. You get the regular Blu-ray versions and the 3D Blu-ray versions, along with codes for the uh, digital copies of all of them. Uh, there are no DEDs in this. This is Blu-ray and digital copy only. All right, so I got the tab down here open. This is the back of it. Oh, right away, there's like an envelope with uh, writing on the back. Looks like uh, looks like it's in Russian, actually. Like it's something to do with the Black Window Black Widow character. Well, I'll open this bad boy first. Uh, the rest of it looks looks like packing materials and foam back there. I think in here you should see the discs. Oh, there you go. So I'll get to those in a second, but that's just the cardboard disc sleeves uh, with the artwork on them. But before I get to that, let's see what's in this thing. All right, there's a string back here holding it together, so I'll undo that. Ooh, what is in here? A whole bunch of stuff. Let's take all of this out. Whoa. So there were some pictures of this stuff online, but we didn't actually... In the official press release, it didn't actually unveil all the little things that come inside this. So here is a pile of swag memorabilia from the films. There are these, which look to be Marvel uh, coasters for cups. I'll open this up quickly. It looks like Asgardian sort of designs. There's four of them. Yeah. There you go. So it's just cardboard. No, no special material. I'm not going to actually use these because they'll get marked up with drink stains. So that's neat. And after that, it looks like there's a pin or a magnet made in China. It's the Avengers logo. It's just a plastic rubbery button of sorts. I don't know what you do with that. Maybe it is a magnet. I don't think it is, though. It's not heavy enough. There you go. There is a notepad from Tony Stark's lab, R&D department. And yeah. The pages are blank, but you can see like kind of like the watermark that says Tony Stark's R&D department on every page in the notepad. Also not going to use those because I don't want to waste them. Next up, Scott called her Aunt Thunny. Oh, it's a specimen of the... Oh, no, that's kind of sad. That low blow Marvel. This is the heroic steed of Scott Lang and previously Hank Pym in the Ant-Man film. Uh, <laughs> dies, spoiler, in the final act when Yellow Jacket, played by Corey Stoll, blasts him away. This is a specimen of his wing. Uh, I don't know who collected this, but it says specimen 247, colony 86, Scott Calder Antony, K-I-A. So this, I'm guessing, actually, this is probably Hank Pym's uh, collection. He's uh, 
another genius scientist who works with not only shrinking technology and pin particles, but uh, our little ant friends as well. So that's kind of a fun nod to the end of phase two. Next up, uh, Millennium Tech Summit. It's an ID badge. Uh, it says, you know who I am, and it's referring back to 2000. So I think this is from, uh, is it, what's his name, Aldrich Killian, who end up, ends up becoming the Mandarin, played by Guy Pearce in Iron Man 3. Uh, in the intro to Iron Man 3, you hear like the, the blue da ba dee da ba that song from Eiffel 65, and it's a flashback to 1999, the new year, becoming 2000 at this press conference, where Tony Stark treats Aldrich like an asshole, uh, and then of course, Guy Pearce comes back to become the main villain. So uh, I think this is like a revenge ID card in the back of it. You see like coffee stains and like aging and a bunch of like tech formulas. I don't know what that is for. Probably for the extremist virus that they use to create the exploding soldiers and give uh, Aldrich Killian his Mandarin style powers. Speaking of the Mandarin, this looks like a sticker or actually the temporary tattoo. Yeah, it's a temporary tattoo of the 10 rings logo. Man, I really hope in phase four they bring back the, um, the Iron Man franchise and, and bring back Ben Kingsley as the real Mandarin next time uh, and get to see more of the Ten Rings because they were kind of a, a big player in the background in the first two Iron Man films and there's even a Ten Rings buyer who shows up as like an easter egg in the Ant-Man film as one of the interested parties in buying the, the new Pym Particle tech from uh, Corey Stahl's character. Next up we have an old World War II photo of Bucky Barnes who comes back next year for Captain America Civil War played by Sebastian Stan. Nice little photo. I don't know who's keeping this. I'm guessing this is a picture from Steve Rogers since he loves his boy. Next up, <laughs> another fun Ant-Man one. This is the name card for Scott Lang's character, uh, his fake name, Jack, when he's working at Baskin Robbins. And uh, Baskin Robbins always finds out of your criminal past. Uh, this looks like a fun Iron Man 3 nod. Um, oh, what's his name? Adam, Adam Pally's character? who's a big Tony Stark fanboy, has a Tony Stark tattoo on his arm, and he kind of makes his face look like Tony Stark, and he's a, that's that's what it looks like. <laughs> Next up, uh, oh, speaking of Pym Tech, um, Michael Pena's character, who goes undercover as part of the heist to kind of save the day at the end of Ant-Man. This is what he uses to go undercover. And, ooh, this is a nod to Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Now, the S.H.I.E.L.D. team that Cap leads with Frank Grillo's character, Brock Rumlau, who becomes Crossbones. He returns in Civil War as well in a supporting role. Uh, this is their elite team. They're called Strike Team. So that's kind of a neat one. That's actually, um, you can actually sell this onto something, a bag or a shirt or something. Pretty neat. I like that. Um, I don't know what this is. This is a postcard. River Rafter, J.D. Canoe Rental, Dolores River. I don't know what that's from. Let me know in the comments what that is. This, um, this is totally escaping me. I should probably know this, but I, I have no idea what this is. Canoe rental, river rafter. I don't know. I don't know what that is from. Um, remember this? From inside the Quinjet. <laughs> There's a sticker on the side. I can verify this is the jet because I was actually uh, on the set of Avengers Age of Ultron for a day or two. And we got to go inside the, the new Quinjet that Stark makes for the Avengers team. Uh, and, and I got to sit in the pilot seat. And this was on the side of it, on the wall. Jarvis is my co-pilot. Jarvis is now Vision, an Avenger with an Infinity, <laughs> Infinity Stone right in his head. Oh, so this was making headlines and, and, and skyrocketing on Reddit last week. The Sokovia Accords. So this they did not announce as part of the um, official detailing of all the contents as part of this pack. Probably because they wanted to keep it secret until they released the Captain America Civil War trailer. I talk a lot about this in my analysis post of the first Civil War trailer, and I also wrote a separate article explaining what the Sokovia Accords are and how they relate to the Superhuman Registration Act, which was like the centerpiece um, piece of political legislation um, that caused, that was at the center of the conflict of the Civil War comics. Uh, also, we have an article up yesterday talking about Civil War II, uh, Brian Michael Bendis, and I forget who the other author is, they're doing a follow up, a sequel event to Civil War. Uh, so this is actually real. I'm glad to confirm it. So I think there's na there are names of the Avengers on the sheet. Oh, it's it's actually real. So I'll read this to you very quickly. Um, verified, this is real. Uh, so interestingly enough, uh, Stark, Romanoff, and Clint Barton, uh, that's Iron Man, Black Widow, and Hawkeye respectively, are all on this list. And that's interesting because they're all humans. They are not enhanced individuals. They're not superpowered people. Stark's got superpowered weapons. But... Barton and Romanoff are just elite agents, so it's kind of interesting that they're on this. 
Uh, maybe because they're vigilantes, not just superpower people. But anyways, I'll read this. In accordance with the document at hand, I hereby certify that the below mentioned participants, peoples, and individuals shall no longer operate freely or unregulated, but instead operate under the rules, ordinances, and governances of the aforementioned United Nations panel. So confirmed, the United Nations and all the countries that signed up, including Wakanda, the home of Black Panther, uh, they are the decision makers behind sending the Avengers, or at least they want to be the decision makers approving the missions that the Avengers go on. That way they're not just crossing borders and breaking laws and causing collateral damage without regulation. And it says, acting only when and if the panel deems it appropriate and or necessary. No wonder Steve Rogers is not a fan of this. Uh, red tape, man. Red tape costs lives. He just wants to go out there and save the day. So, uh, oh, Sam Wilson, also on this, human. So half this list are non-superpower people. So it just, it seems like the Sokovia Accords are more about vigilantism, not just being superpowered. And they're not just trying to register and control power people, but they're trying to control anyone who has the uh, know-how and abilities and, 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 I guess, tech to um, cause shit overseas. Next up, we have a newspaper clipping. On the back, it says December 17th, 1991. And if you pay attention to the little imagery in uh, the Iron Man films and Captain America, the Winter Soldier, this is how Tony Stark's father, Howard Stark, played by Dominic Cooper in the past and John Slattery in, in, in closer to the present, this is how he passed away. So December 17th, 1991, a long time ago. Uh, Howard Stark, founder of Stark Industries, was confirmed dead this morning after suffering massive internal injuries from a fatal car crash. Uh, of course, oh, I, I'll read more of this. It says, his wife, Maria Stark, was also in the car and confirmed dead at the crash scene as well. A full autopsy and crash investigation will be performed to determine the cause of the accident. There's no official statement from Mr. Stark's spokesperson. Uh, several motorists were detained for questioning in connection with the accident, but all have since been released. The, and it, this is in quotes now. The death of such a brilliant inventor has taken us all by surprise and fills us all with extreme grief for such a tremendous loss. Our thoughts and prayers are with the Stark family during this difficult time, said Howard Stark's business partner, Obadiah Stane, from the first Iron Man film. So I wonder how involved he actually was. But of course, the theory and in, in what's been hinted at in the films is that none other than Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier, was the assassin who uh, made this look like an accident. And that's probably why Tony Stark, we're all guessing, has a personal vendetta out for Bucky Barnes uh, in Captain America Civil War because he wants to hold this guy uh, accountable for, for killing his parents. Next up, ooh, we're getting some deep cuts, marble cosmic lore here. This is a diagram, historical diagram, showing what appears to be different aliens, uh, the internals, whatever, collecting the six infinity stones the almighty MacGuffins of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, interesting. Let's take a look at that. It's semi-transparent, almost like rice paper. It's very, very thin. There you go. We ain't done yet. We got a little bit of dark elf lore. I think this was in one of the books they showed in Thor The Dark World. That's actually probably where this came from as well. This wasn't from Guardians of the Galaxy uh, when the Collector kind of taught... Star-Lord all about the Infinity Stones, then it's probably from Thor the Dark World along with this document. Um, so you can see the other side of it. It's very religious looking. So this is all about how Malekith and the Dark Elves came to be. And next up, the final piece is another photo of a frozen Winter Soldier. That's Bucky Barnes uh, in a containment unit. This is Barnes, James Buchanan... It's all written in Russian, so I guess they're the guys who recovered him um, at, uh, towards the end of World War II when we see Bucky fall off that train into the water and he loses his arm in the first Captain America film. So that's it. That's all the fun bonus material. Let's get to the main, the main show. Again, here's the box. Kind of opening this thing from the back. I think I can't seem to open it any further, so I'm just going to slide this stuff out the back. So I'm going to put this down like this and lift the box right off. Hopefully it doesn't go everywhere. Cool. All right. So, whoa, it's all falling down. I'll put these back in. The case is like sliding out the back. All right. So, it's all stacked foam and cardboard, but there you go. That is the orb, the MacGuffin from Guardians of the Galaxy. We'll get to that in a second. Turn this around so you can see it better. 
So the packing material is not very user friendly. But this is just protection for the top and it protects the top of the orb. Get rid of that. Open this cardboard up. And I think we can take the orb out next. Wow, that's really in there. All right. So it's just black display cardboard. I've removed it all. Now you can see the orb. It's uh, it feels like toy plastic, but it's got some weight to it because of what's in the inside. So uh, it actually looks a little bigger than what I thought. So on on the, in the props room on the set of Guardians of the Galaxy, we saw different versions of this. There were some darker versions. There were versions I think that were designed to glow to create that ambient effect when the stone is is uh, I don't know glowing for whatever reason. This I think it may twist. There's a line in the circumference here. Try to open this bad boy up. I don't know if I uh, there's a trick to this. Or if I just pull it apart. Oh, I was twisting it the wrong way. There you go. Look at the detail. The detailing on the inside is very neat. You got kind of like gold and silver. It's all plastic, but it's, it looks like it's been aged a little bit to look kind of ancient and all cosmic-like. And this side, so both sides empty. No Infinity Stone just yet. I actually think this lights up. Maybe that's why there's weight. Maybe the batteries go on this side. There seems to be like a little lens. Maybe that's a light? I'm guessing that's a light that goes on this side. This is probably the bottom. You can put the orb on top and it glows, I'm guessing. Little instruction booklet. It says battery replacement instructions. So there you go. That's how you get the battery in there. So I probably should read it, but... This thing, this part here, where the light is, looks like it twists. Aha. There we go. See the plastic insides. There are screws, I guess, to take off the top. So you need to, that's where that goes. And batteries go in there. You need one, um... You need LR44 batteries. Three of them. Okay, so put that back in here. Close that up. We're not worried about that. We don't need the all of those details. So back to the main unit. Let's see if we can get this cardboard up. So I'm lifting the cardboard forward here. Like that. Oh, I see the orb. I mean the stone. Very cool. Looks like it's made of glass. And the main butt base, so it's not that big, so it's not if you're worried about shelf space when you're displaying this. It's actually uh, a good size. So get rid of the cardboard. There you go. So this is the part you face frontward, and in the back are the um, disc sleeves. So we can slide these things out. That part's always exposed, by the way. So I guess you can turn it around if you want that facing forward. These are just cardboard sleeves, and uh, you can get a, more details on the artwork. On I'll put a link in the description to the article on this, but there you go, Iron Man 3. All of this art, of course, again, it's by Matt Ferguson, who did the artwork. It's on, it, it wraps around both sides. It's actually kind of a banner-style artwork. That's the big uh, Dark Elf ship. Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Just beautiful, beautiful artwork. Uh, it's really hard to see in video, but look at how the clouds form the Hydra logo as a helicarrier crashes into the Triskelion Shield headquarters. The Fall of Shield, Guardians of the Galaxy. Beautiful artwork here. See the planets in the background, Ronin and Nebula on the other side, the villains. Look how big Ronin is. There they are. And then the Avengers Age of Ultron with the Hulkbuster armor. On the other side, you see Ultron and the twins, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, and you see Vision flying in the background there. Very nice stuff. Ant-Man, it's also pretty cool. He's riding a little, um, little army of ants, and then of course you have a giant yellow jacket on the other side. Very cool. This is the bonus disc, which features Thanos. He's uh, voiced and motion captured um, by Josh Brolin, and the other side just some cosmic imagery. So there you go, that's the seven disc cases. Actually, I'm curious how many discs, I think there's 12 discs in total, maybe 13 or 14, but here, here's the Guardians of the Galaxy one, for instance. You got the regular the Blu-ray and the 3D Blu-ray. So each one of these has two, two discs at least, and then there's the bonus disc here, um, 
Ooh. It says, before creation itself, there were six singularities. Then the universe exploded into existence, and the remnant of these systems were forged into concentrated ingots. Infinity Stones. I'm pretty sure those are the words of the Collector from Guardians of the Galaxy, who returns for the sequel, Volume 2. And, um, oh, I'm not going to show you that. That is um, uh, digital codes. Okay, so, there you go. That's a look at the Phase 2 collection. This is just plastic as well. It's actually kind of flexible, so it's not very thick. It's not industrial plastic by any means. But, oh, last but not least, let me show you this yet. The Power Stone. So, uh, I wonder, I got to get a closer look. I, I don't remember, but from the Phase 1 collection, you probably got the, I guess, the blue one of these, right? Which is the uh, Space Stone. Um, I wonder if it's like the same size and material. It'd be cool to kind of collect them all. So, this just sits in this oval seat. And that'll look really good when you light it up. I don't know how to actually turn that thing on, but. Oh, it's on. There's a little, that is cool. So take that off and it's light, you know, lit up if you want to display it. So how I did that, there's a little switch here beside the light. And there you go, cool. Phase two, home video collection. Um, so like I said at the top of the video, today's not only the day uh, that the Phase 2 collection comes out, but it's also the day Iron Man comes out. Iron Man. Ant-Man. Which is the final uh, film of Phase 2. Introducing a much new character. Scott Lang, of course, does return for Captain America Civil War. And there's a sequel already in development. Uh, we have a bunch of articles about that and what director Peyton Reed, who returns for the sequel, is saying about the sequel. Um, he said it's, it's going to be a different genre. And it's called Ant-Man and the Wasp, so Evangeline Lilly will be back in a big way, finally suiting up as a superhero herself. Should be awesome. And as a bonus, the whole reason I'm doing this video is to show you this. So, Ant-Man. They've had some pretty creative marketing. At Comic-Con, uh, they had these billboards out in the streets. Everywhere you go, there were these little billboards and Marvel representatives. And the billboards were this big. And it was basically a billboard for ants. Like an ant-sized film billboard that you see at the side of a highway. And I got a photo of that. I put that on Instagram months ago. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. But in that vein... <laughs> This is what I call the Ant-Man Blu-ray, and what I'm going to show you next is what I call Ant-Man's Ant-Man Blu-ray, which is that little thing right there. Uh, designed by Janky Toys, it's almost like it's like a miniature diorama-friendly size little Ant-Man home video case. It's so detailed. I'm taking this thing off. There's only 65 of these in circulation. This is number 38 of 65, so I got this as a fun little thing. But take a look at that. That is just so you can see. Look how tiny that is. And it's hard to tell from the video, but the, that actually says the same thing this says, where it's like, includes a first exclusive look at phase three. That's what that little tiny text says. And there's a little Blu-ray plastic case in there <laughs> with all the little details in the back and the barcode even. Pretty impressive, right? So that's made by Janky Toys. I'll put a link to their stuff in the, in the description below, but that's a fun little nod to Ant-Man. Also available today. So if you don't, if you already have the other movies and are looking to fill out your collection, Ant-Man Blu-ray is also available. Uh, interestingly, it comes with a black case instead of the standard blue. So that's kind of neat too. Anyways, uh, I have some other videos to record this week as we get closer to the holiday season and the release of Star Wars. I'm going to be pulling up some of my old Star Wars toys I've had for 20 years from the basement and maybe make some fun videos with those. Um, if you want to see more, you want to share your thoughts on what I've um, showing you here and if you know what that one piece was the the river rafting one that I didn't know let me know in the comments I'm totally drawing a blank on that one um, Anyways and say hi in the comments because I love reading them and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Cheers